Question 6.1 asks us to define boiling point. Now, we all know what boiling point is. We know that it's the temperature at which a liquid turns into a gas. But you can't use that as the definition. The proper scientific definition of boiling point is the following. It is the temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. Okay, so let me quickly explain. If you have a liquid, let's say we have a, well, let's first say we have a container with some liquid. As you start increasing the temperature, more of these molecules are going to be able to turn into a gas, and so you're going to start having more gas molecules over here. And so we can see that the gas pressure is going to start increasing. At the same time, we also have an atmosphere. You know, the air around us, that also has a pressure. When the pressure because of the atmosphere is the same as the pressure due to the gases, which is called the vapor pressure, then things start to boil. And that is what boiling point actually is. For 6.2.1, they tell us that P, Q, and R are being compared. They're boiling points. It says, besides the conditions used, give a reason why this is a fair comparison. Well, there's a couple of different answers you could say here. You could say that all of the masses are the same. So we could say that the molecular mass is the same. Another one you could say is that they're all from the same homologous group, same homologous series, and they have the same number of carbons. Let me show you what I mean. This one is a prop, which is three carbons, but then it's got a dimethyl. So it's got two methyls, so that means it's got a total of five carbons. Okay, this one here is a butanol, which is four carbons, but then it also has a methyl group, so that's another one carbon. So this one also has five carbons. And then pentanol just has five carbons. So they all have the same amount of carbon. 6.2.2, the boiling point increases from P to R. Fully explain this trend. So they tell us that the boiling point increases. Okay, so the boiling point increases, so it gets larger from P to R. Now, the reason for this will be explained by first drawing these out quickly. So I'm gonna draw this first one out. So that's prop anal, so that looks like this. Now that's an aldehyde. So on carbon number one, it would have a double bond oxygen. And then on carbon number two, there is a methyl group going over here, for example. And then there's another one going down here because they said that there's two methyls. And then we can put the hydrogens Okay, so this is molecule P. Now molecule Q is 2-methyl-butanol, so that's got four carbons with an oxygen, double bonded like that. And then on carbon 2, there is a methyl, so I'll do it over here. And then the rest is just hydrogen. There we go, so that would be molecule Q. And then molecule R is a straight chain with five carbons like that. And then the rest is just hydrogen. And that is molecule R. Okay guys, so I want you to have a careful look at the, these. Which ones, okay, so if you look at R, first of all, that one has no branches. This one has one branch. And this one has two branches. Can you guys remember how branches affect your boiling point? Let me explain it. The more branches, A molecule has the lower the surface area. Okay, a lower surface area means that the London forces will be weaker. Therefore, 
less energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces. Now I'm going to quickly show you something. So if you have a molecule that has, um, let's, let's look at the molecule of P, and then I'm going to quickly draw another molecule of P. Now if you try to put these two molecules close together, it is not going to work out very nicely. The reason is, is that these branches are going to get in the way. And so what we can say is that there is, it is more difficult to put these two branches closer together. And so in science, we'll rather say that there is less surface area available. There's less surface area available for these intermolecular forces, like the London forces, to act. Now, if I take the molecules of R, can you see that I'll be able to put those two molecules much closer together? Because what we can see is that the surface area that is available is a lot larger for these intermolecular forces, such as the London forces, to work. Can you see there's a larger surface area? So when you have more branches, then you have a lower surface area. And a lower surface area means that the London forces will be weaker because there's less of them. Therefore, less energy is needed to overcome the intermolecular forces. So in general, more branches equals lower boiling point. Okay, so the answer that you would have given would be this one over here. Hope that that makes sense, guys. And then just one more thing for that question. Q would be somewhere in between. So a Q would be, um, it would have a higher boiling point than P, but not as high as R. Okay, and then it says the last question here, the boiling points of R, S, and T are given below, not necessarily in the correct order. Which one of the three is most likely compound S? So that is just a five carbon alcohol with an OH on carbon number one, and then the rest is just hydrogen. Okay, then we are going to look at butanoic acid, which is a carboxylic acid with four carbons. And then I nearly forgot, they also want us to use R, which is pentanol. So that's just a five carbon. So if you've watched my videos on intermolecular forces for grade 12 chemistry, we would have to, well, we would remember that an alcohol has hydrogen bonding over here. So it's got hydrogen bonding. Obviously, that's not the hydrogen bond. We're not talking about this little bond. But what I mean is if we had to draw another alcohol, then we know that there's hydrogen bonding. Butanoic acid has hydrogen bonding as well, but it also has dipole-dipole over there. And we must also remember that this part here is also London forces. And for butanoic acid, it also has London. And then for the aldehyde, it's got a dipole-dipole. And then this area here would always be your London. Obviously, I'd have to draw other molecules so you could see the intermolecular forces. But you guys should watch my video on that first, and then this will make a lot more sense. So in general, okay, in general, carboxylic acids always have a higher boiling point because if you look carefully, they have hydrogen bonding, but they also have the dipole-dipole, and then they have the London force. Aldehydes, I mean alcohols, sorry, alcohols will be second because they've got the hydrogen bonding, and then they've also got the London forces, which is all of that. But then, and then the last one would be the aldehyde because it only has the dipole-dipole, and then it's got the London forces. So we can say that carboxylic acids have larger, or let's say stronger, it's a better word, intermolecular forces than alcohols. Alcohols have stronger intermolecular forces than aldehydes. 
more energy is needed to overcome forces of attraction in carboxylic acid compared to in the alcohol and then we can say the alcohol needs more energy to overcome forces of attraction compared to the aldehyde. So if we have a look carefully, the question says, which of the three boiling points is likely compound S? So compound S is the alcohol. So that one should be the middle one because we said that um, pentanol is the lowest, butanoic acid is the highest boiling point, and then pentan 1 o is the middle. So we look for the middle value over here, and that would be the 138 degrees.